Hi and welcome to another Inkscape tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Blueprint Infographic Tutorial. Alright, let's get straight into it. We have a canvas here of 1920 by 1008 pixels. We have a smooth blue gradient moving from the left, bottom left to the right. So that's dark to, to light and that's a linear gradient. And we have this grid here that I've created which is full of interpolated lines. And the first thing I'm going to do is that because I don't want the path editor to influence these lines and the background, I'm going to go ahead and select everything apart from the circle. Then what I'm going to do next is go to layer and go to layers. And we're gonna create a new layer right here called layer two. Oh, let's just go ahead and create a new layer, layer two. Right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and reselect everything. Um, make sure that the circle is not selected. So, looks like it's grouped up. Let's reselect everything. Make sure the circle is not selected. I'm not sure what this is. And what I'm going to do, go ahead and, in fact, let me just copy the circle. I'm just going to cut the circle and move, go to layer 2 and hit Control, Alt and V and that will paste the circle back to exactly where it needs to go. So a handy shortcut for you, Control, Alt and V, paste whatever you cut in the exact position for which it was cut. And that can be very useful. So we're going to go ahead with the circle. So, I got, so now that we have a circle here, just go ahead and open up something else. Um, File open recently, blue material. I'm just gonna move this over here. Open recent blueprint. Good. Alright then, so we've got our circle here, and this is a circle that I just have for reference point so I know how large I'm making things. I'm gonna duplicate it once. And with the first duplicate, I'm going to hold control and hold control alone. I'm gonna select this arrow double arrow scale option I'm going to scale up to about here I'm going to move it to the side a bit good then I'm going to duplicate this small one one more time with control and D and holding control we're going to translate it to the right hand side good and then when it reaches about here we're going to go ahead and scale it up with the same arrow just a little bit more and we're going to duplicate the circle one last time and bring it to the outer edge of the last circle we duplicated and I'm just going to hold control and scale it down from the top right arrow again and scale it to about here and this makes the basis of our cloud so next we're going to need um, the bezier tool so I'm going to press the bezier tool in our toolbox let's go ahead and close this layer dialog box and we're going to activate our snap tool and you can activate that with control and five, which is your percentage. No, shift and five, which is your percentage. Good, so I'm gonna activate the scroll, the snap tool. Make sure that snap nodes, paths, and handles are selected. And also make sure that snap paths, snap to paths is selected. So we're just gonna go ahead and we see the snap tool activated at the bottom. And what we're gonna do is hold control as we draw the bezier line until we reach the second circle. And we're just going to double click to close to, um, to finish the line segment. And I'm going to press D and select the white, and we have everything right here. Good. So now that we have our path. I'm going to go ahead and press Bez the B again to activate the Bezier tool. And we see that we have this square, which is the end of what of our segment that we created. And we'll see that square once the line segment that we created is selected. I'm just going to click in that square and continue the Bezier path and we're going to create a small rectangle and that will close the path. All right, and we're going to need that for the completion of the cloud. So we're going to go ahead and select all three of the circles. We're going to hit Control and D to duplicate them. Hold Shift and select this box that we just created and we're going to go to Path and Union. And we won't be able to see what that does straight away, but this is combining the cloud. So if we hold control and just make sure I have everything selected and just move it to the side, we can see that we have our cloud, our poofy cloud. 
good so for the next thing we're going to select this cloud i'm going to go to object and fill and stroke and we're going to give it a stroke style of one millimeter now I make it thick and then we're going to select the internal circles here that we want as construction lines millimeters and we're going to make it 0 0.25 millimeters good so they look like construction signs within there okay we're still seeing the path activate let me see what's happening shouldn't let's go back to our layer 2 I think I forgot to lock it let's go to layers and just lock this bottom layer so we don't have it interfering with our actions right here good so we have our cloud I'm gonna go ahead and make our phone next so we're gonna to go to rectangle tool and we're gonna draw a phone about this size um, yeah this size looks good I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna double click and click this circular node here and we're gonna hold control and just pull it out and this will round our box control keeps the rounding proportional let's take off the snap tool and we have our box gonna go ahead and give it a stroke so just set press D to go to the dropper tool hold shift and click the white now we'll give it a stroke we don't see it now because we need to add thickness to it and we're gonna make it one millimeter great next we're gonna duplicate that stroke that we just created select these two rectangles and we're gonna remove the fill so go down to the bottom left left click this and remove fill good so we've removed the fill and we have the stroke and we have the duplication and what we're doing is simply just making the screen and remember that we're duplicating with control and D good so our screen is pretty much made we need the two buttons at the top and bottom so we're going to go ahead select the rectangle or oblong tool again I'm going to create this at the top go to the bottom and we're going to press D select the white to fill it in come down here left right click and remove the stroke that's under the stroke right here where the, where the arrow is moving that's the bottom left of the screen and let's do some moving around good bring this a bit lower and let's take out the rounding on this and squash it a bit good and let's increase the real estate of the screen and let's decrease this button too All right and this looks pretty good could be a bit longer and let's make it slightly longer these phones nowadays are longer good so that's our phone so I'm gonna go ahead and create the tablet so I'm gonna duplicate this move it to the side I'm just gonna scale it up a bit and until we get a size that we're comfortable for tablet size and the tablet typically has a bit more width to it so we're gonna add more width good I'm gonna delete this button at the top I'm gonna to make the top button of the tablet square I'm just gonna stretch it out a bit make sure that the tablet gets a bit more real screen real estate than the phone did in terms of its proximity to the bevel and going to move this square up let's duplicate it one more time up here and make sure that the top gets more space than the bottom you know in fact let's not even delete that let's not use let's use the original um this is the same circle that we use for the phone and um, select these two with holding shift we're going to go to object and align and distribute and we're going to go to center on vertical axis and that will center the button and let's go ahead and do that for this bottom at the below just to center it All right so everything is uniform and we have our tablet but the strokes are a bit off so we're going to go to stroke style in our fill and stroke dialog box that we should still have open if you don't have it open go to object um, and fill and stroke or you can hit control shift and f then navigate to the show style tab we're going to change from percentage to millimeter and we're going to make this one millimeters for the 2lm so we have our tablet next we're going to move on to the screen so we're going to duplicate the phone here come up here to the top and we're going to make the screen of our laptop so we're going to pull out this rectangle box about here is good 
right? and like the tablet and phone we're going to duplicate it and scale in holding control and shift and that gives us proportional scale just going to move it out a bit so that it matches the bevel and then we're going to go out to lips to and create a circle holding control and shift while we scale up that circle then we're going to go to the star tool and we're going to create a triangle so we're going to have to move from the star to the polygon and it's got six corners now but we only want three so we're going to just tap it down to three tap it down to three and then we're just going to go ahead and scale up and it's hard to see here because i did it on the white circle so let me just move it around mine has a bit of roundness to it sometimes i like my play buttons that look a bit rounded i have mine at 0 0.12 0 0.12 roundness you know you can do the same if you wish or you can make it flat if you wish i think the picture on the actual tutorial is flat which i regret i wish i did the rounded one <laughs> but you know you have you have the liberty to do those things and we're going to go ahead and make the bottom of it now so for the bottom we're going to hit the rectangle tool and we're just going to click and drag out across the base of our screen for the laptop it's a bit chunky on my side let's just bring it in and we're going to round it off a little bit good i think this is a good roundness and i'm going to get the bezier tool set b Go in roughly the middle of this and hit control, hold control while you're moving your line so that you get a nice straight line. I'm going to double click this, click the rectangle you just created, and we're going to go to path and division. And that's going to cut it in two. Then we're just going to move this away, lift this up, this bottom piece up, delete the top piece with the delete key and we're gonna go ahead and just stretch it down a bit good next we're gonna go to and select this node down here holding con holding shift select the other node and making sure that show transformation or handles for selected nodes is activated all right you're gonna see two handles here and we just want to select the handle and we're going to scale in holding control push it in okay looks like control wasn't wasn't held you know in time let's hold control and scale in again or is it shift or is it control and shift okay I have to use control and shift here scale them both in proportionally and select these two nodes on top we're just going to move them up a bit All right and that gives us a traditional laptop shape i'm going to select this and the screen make sure last is selected and we're going to center this on the vertical axis right, so when you're using alignment you have to know which one you selected last or first so that when you check the order up here you know that you're moving the correct one object relative to the other in my instance, I made sure the screen was, was selected last. So that way I know that the laptop base is gonna move and not the screen. Okay, so we have a, the basis for our tutorial right here. So we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm going to duplicate this construction circle and we're just gonna scale it up, up, up. And I'm gonna duplicate it once more and scale it in. Good. I'm going to select the two of them and then I'm going to go to stroke style, change it to millimeters, change it to 0 0.5 or 25, sorry. And I'm going to give it some construction dashes for a bit of width between them. You know, you can pick a different one. I just prefer this one. And then I'm going to group it. Good. So we have a construction dash, make sure that they pass through all three, the phone, the tablet, and the laptop. Good. Right, 
So that they're moving in good way. So we've got the laptop and the tablet and the phone. So we're gonna move on to the live to the path effects. So we're gonna first do the hatching for all of these three, including the cloud. So first up, let's close out these so that we have three view for our path effects editor. And we're gonna to go to path and go to path effects editor, or you can hit control sh um, control shift and seven. Is it control shift and seven? Shift, con yes, control shift and seven to activate it. With this selected, you're gonna see the green arrow activated and we can add a path effect and we're gonna add hatches rough. Good. Oh, you wanna make sure that you duplicate it first. So we're gonna create hatches rough. Awesome. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and double click this and we see a couple of nodes here, two yellow and two green and two diamonds and two circles. What we're gonna move for first is the diamond green. I'm gonna click it left click it and then just turn and rotate the hatch because we want it going from you know in a diagonal if we want to go in a diagonal let's select this hatch and put it underneath the circle awesome and let's put this down underneath the circle too the double circle the double construction lines and it's sort of thick right now so what we're gonna do we're gonna and it's sort of random a bit too random so we're gonna reduce the Free frequency randomness to 50 you know so it looks a bit more uniform in fact we can even change it to 45 add a bit more uniformity to it and we can stretch it you can bring it in a bit um, I don't mind I think this looks good we can tweak the other settings but this looks pretty good and then we're gonna hit control and C control shift and C to set that path we're gonna go to par then we're gonna go to object fill and stroke and we're gonna make this stroke slightly smaller maybe a 0 0.4 or a 0 0.6 I think 0 0.6 looks really good good and just fill in this path so there's no lines in between all right and that's our first hatch so we're gonna do the same for the phone duplicate it go to hit Control shift and seven go to hatches rough good and we're gonna duplicate double click it and go to the green and then just turn it and scale it out a bit good we're gonna reduce the frequency randomness to 45 and we're gonna go ahead and yeah I think this looks good we're gonna go ahead and exit this and hit control shift and C, changes to a path. We're gonna to go to stroke style, change it to 0 0.6. And we're gonna to go to fill, and we're gonna give this a fill of white. Awesome, so we have our stroke here. In fact, this could go down a little bit further because it's the phone, it's a small screen size. You can even carry this to a four. Yeah, that looks good. All right, then we're gonna double click we're gonna duplicate this with control and D and repeat the process, control shift and seven, add the hatches effect. You know, thankfully the live path effect I used last is saved. And we're gonna make it diagonal again. Reduce the frequency to 45, 45%. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit control shift and C, that's good come out of the path effect editor and in the stroke style we're going to change this to like a 0 0.5 you know, in fact this could be much thicker let's make it 0 0.6 and we're going to fill in it we're going to press D and fill in the middle with white good so we have our hatches for our three devices and we're going to lastly our hatches for our, set for our cloud and we're gonna do the same procedure, seven. Add the hatches, double click, use the green diamond, switch it up in terms of direction, scale it in, let's make the randomness. Actually, I like the randomness on this. I do like the randomness on this. I don't think I want it to change. Don't want it to change. It's, let's see if I can mess about with the seed a bit. All right, and um, 
Alright, let's mess about with the seed a bit. See if we get a nicer one. Yeah, I still sort of like this. Let's make the randomness about 60. Yeah, this looks good. This looks very good. So, this is what I want for this. The construction lines are sort of fading away in the background, so I soon change them out. Control Shift and C. Alright, we want to make sure it has lines in there. And I'm not going to change. Am I going to change the thickness? Yeah, let me change the thickness to like 0 0.8. Not too much. I'm going to go in and select these construction circle lines that we have here. Let's go in zooming close and select them. And we're just going to make it like 0 0.5 so we can see them a bit more. Awesome. So we have the hatches for the circles, the hat for the cloud, the hatches. In fact, let's make this a, a lot lighter. Let's make it a four or a three even. All right, so we can see it a bit better. Yeah, let's make it a three. And this can reduce to, to like a four. Good. So we have these hatches for the cloud, the tablet, and the phone. I'm just gonna go ahead and create the stitch or the sketch, sorry, for the cloud. So for that, we're going to go to the path effect editor, path, path effects, add it, and we're going to go to sketch, which is in the lower end, and we're gonna add it, and we see a whole lot of stuff. And it looks a bit confusing and dotting at first, but we're gonna break it down for you. First up, we don't want any construction lines, and that's the tangential lines that move across. So we're gonna to go to construction lines here and hit zero. Good. For all the other lines, they're controlled by the strokes. So we're gonna reduce the strokes to about four. Good, so they're not quite as numerous. Also, we wanna make sure that the offset is not so high. So we're gonna bring down the average offset and you'll see that the strokes begin to converge closer to the original stroke. And that's what we want. Good, and we're gonna reduce the treble a bit and that is reducing the amount of um, sort of difference between the strokes. So you see it's coming closer in. You know, we can even, you know, let's increase the stroke variation a bit. Yeah, that's good. And let's reduce the average offset and increase the treble a bit more. And I think this looks good, but before I set this, I'm gonna click Control Shift F, and we're just gonna reduce this like a 0 0.5. Right, you can even reduce it a little bit lower to maybe a four. And maybe we can reduce the amount of strokes that we have in the path effect to about three. Yeah. Yeah, I think this looks about good. Okay, so we have our main elements done. We're gonna go ahead and go to these two main circles that we created, the two construction line circles. We're gonna duplicate it. Oh, we're gonna ungroup it with Control and U. We're gonna duplicate one of them with Control and D, scale it into the middle, and then exit out this. We're going to move this to a solid line and give it a thickness of one. Good. Then we're gonna go ahead and sever some of these, sever these lines. So we want these lines severed. So here, we want them divided at these particular points, because that's where the arrow is gonna go. And I'm gonna select all of them, go to path and union. And then we're going to select this middle one and go to path and division. Good, and we're just going to delete this middle one here. We're gonna double click these paths, select all these paths here that are not the circular line, and we're just gonna go up to our toolbox, control toolbox for our node tool, and we're gonna break the path selected nodes. Once it's broken, we're gonna press the delete button. Now once it's broken, well, we should really press delete, but that just didn't work out the way I wanted. So it's going to delete these ones and delete them one by one. 
and we're going to apply the same to the other two we're just going to go and select these two and break the path and then we're just going to delete them same with this one select these nodes that we don't want then we're going to break the path and then press delete on the keyboard all right and that gives us our lines and lastly we have to make some arrows I made these arrows by hand nice loopy here good I think these arrows always look good that's why I like to do them they always look like sketchy sort of arrow shapes good and let's just increase this thickness to one Uh, this increases like a 0 0.7 awesome so we have our arrows here and let's gonna duplicate this and place them on each end of the lines remember that we're duplicating with control and D good and we can go ahead and add our final icons so I'm just going to select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle you know I'm um, give it a stroke and fill it in I want the stroke to be one good then I'm going to get the bezier tool holding control to create increments of 15 at a 45 degree angle and we're going to cut this rectangle here or divide it sorry so we're going to go path and um, divide good then we're just going to go ahead and flip this on the horizontal and vertical axis and flip this here and the document's a bit big so I'm going to scroll that document a bit and scale it in a bit awesome and then we can go ahead and create some lines make sure the first line is shorter than the following lines I don't mind about the space between them because I'm going to align them select all of these and align them and you know at this point you know we're just adding the embellishments to the document we've gone through the majority of it already you know the, the crooks of it and uh, we're just going to go ahead now now that we have this all selected we're going to go ahead and go to our alignment tool you can go to object and align and distribute and we're going to just center all of these it's a lot so let me just remove two and do this again awesome good and we have our document here good next we're going to move on to our pie chart so create a ellipse holding control and shift as we scale up and you're going to select this circle node and lift it up you know make sure you pull out if you pull in you're going to get a arc and you don't want that you want a pie segment good then we're going to duplicate that and select this circle and move it around i'm going to come here and just rotate it so that it fits in and just bring up the segment so it fits completely make this segment white good and that will give us our pie chart and uh, we want the edges roughened a bit to add to this sketch feel so what I'm going to do I'm going to go to the tweak tool select rough parts of paths and with the pie chart selected I'm just going to go ahead and roughen these edges here you know let's take your time and roughen them don't roughen them too much or else you lose the shape and um, don't want to lose the shape good and I think that adds to that sort of drawn effect that we have and lastly we're going to go ahead and make an email or a mail selection mail icon here and I'm going to give it a stroke fill it in like the other two and I'm going to go ahead and hit the B tool the bezier hold control and create angled shape right here let's just drag it right in so that we have the mill 
good uh, we're gonna hold shift and press D or press D and hold shift and that will allow us to change the color of the stroke I'm gonna create two more lines at the bottom and press D and then hold shift again select everything and we're just going to move these nodes a little bit so it looks a bit more like a male awesome and then we're just going to increase the size of these strokes to one millimeter so, so we have our male here and that concludes the blueprint infographic tutorial we went through quite a lot in this tutorial we went through um, live path effects which is you know the hatching and the sketch we went through um, some good construction of nodes you know the rectangle tool extensively the circle tool even the star tool and we took a look at the tweet tool for the pie chart to add some roughen effects well I remember when you go into the tweet tool you have to make sure that roughen parts of path is selected and you can use the default values you know as per usual Right, so this is concludes the end of this tutorial. If you enjoy this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them. If you have any suggestions for the running of the tutorial, you know, feel free to leave that in the comments. I appreciate that. The client base, the fan base appreciates that. And overall, it just makes for a better experience for everyone. So feel free to put that constructive criticism there. If you, uh, criticism there. Remember to hit that subscribe button and until we see each other again, get up and design a new dawn. Later.